go ahead and start off with the one rainbow dragon. I know some people say you can run two. This card is a brick. You, I feel like you should only keep bricks in your deck as a one of, no exceptions. Two Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. A lot of people like to run three. I can see yourself wanting, running three, but I've never personally, since I've been playing this deck, ever wanted three. So I think two is good because you only can use this effect one time to bring out a Rainbow Dragon. Now, if you are going to run three, you probably should bump your Rainbow Dragon up to two. But I like to run minimalist um, combo pieces so that way I can brick less and just pop off and burn through my deck first turn. Because if you bring a Fusion to the field first turn with a backup support of like Appaloosa and a Crystal Miracle, you're in a good position. Now for the regular Crystal Beast names. One Cobalt Eagle, one Topaz Tiger. Um, for you guys that don't know what they do, I know you guys like to get really specific with deck profiles. Cobalt Eagle, I mean, you really, you rarely use their effects, but it can come up. You can target a Crystal Beast card you control, you place the target on the top of the deck. If this card is going to be sure Monster Zone, you can place it in this button Target Zone. They all have that clause. This was good when Mystic Mind was a thing, so that way you won't deck out under Mystic Mind and you can make your opponent deck out, but this effect's not that relevant, but you just run them as a name. One Topaz Tiger, he gains 400 attack when he attacks a monster. It's pretty solid. One Amber Mam, if he, when he's, when another Crystal Beast monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can change it to him, so he's pretty, I mean, he's dated. His effect is dated, but he just, he looks cool. One Turtle, ironically, I, I use Turtle a lot. Um, it'd be a lot of games where it's like, I need to poke for damage, and I don't want, I can't win, but if I can just do some damage, I can. So let's say if I'm sitting under like a Necker Valley, and my opponent is using, like, let's say, for example, tier limits, and their field is open, and I just have this in hand. I would normal summon him, attack, and then his effect says, you can target, once per turn, you target a monster you control that attack this turn, and put him in defense mode. So literally, you can go attack for 800, put himself in defense mode. He has a, he's a 2K B stick, so his effect actually comes up a lot. And Amnest Cat, too. I freaking love this card. So back when Mystic Mind was a thing, you can just literally play Mystic Mind, attack directly, and just sometimes it's steal games because of that. But for the most part, I rarely use them when it does come up sometimes. Like, or if you're like rushing for time and your opponent set up a board that they can't really um, do anything with and they just pass, you can literally play this card, attack life ones directly for game, and win in time. So it's pretty good. And then of course, Ruby Carmichael, anytime she's special summoning, you can special summon all the crystal from the back row to the front row. These are not once return effects, which is why I love them. And three, Pegasus, because Pegasus is the best card in the deck, obviously. He's literally the straddles of the deck. You put a Crystal Beast in the back row, and you pretty much just power through the whole Rainbow Dragon aspect of the deck. You, you abuse Pegasus multiple times on the turn. And then it's time for my spicy tech this weekend. So for the weekend, I was teching two Draki Mero, um, sorry, Quacky Mero Drago. Now, shout outs to dude in the Crystal Beast Facebook group. This is not my original idea. I saw it in the Crystal Beast Facebook group. I forgot what player, I forgot his name, but... He said he went 5-0 at his locals with it, or 4-0 at his locals with it, because he said his locals is really Ichizu tier. He summoned it, and they just scoop pretty much because they can't get over it. And unless they have, like, a, a hand of, like, special summon a Ichizu monster, special summon a Sharon, but just, like, at um, his locals, at regionals, around, around, even though it was around I lost, I was normally summon this dude game one. My opponent couldn't get rid of it, and he just, we went to game two. He went first, popped off, and then game three, he just had, like I said, he had Gamma, Lightning Storm, freaking Diviner Herald, and Sharon, enough, which was enough to just get him there. Like, if he if he had any other combination of cards in his hand, he, 90%, I guarantee you he would have lost. Guarantee you, because he just had a perfect counter hand in my hand, which happens. But nevertheless, or if I would have opened this card up, which I did, because I side a third one, which you guys will see, but this card was amazing. Um, I know you guys are saying, ain't this a combo deck? Why are you playing Quackamara Draco? While this is a combo deck... A lot of the times um, you can brick, so a lot, like I, got, like I did it against my opponent, I think it was around five or six that I was just referencing. My hand was kind of bad, but I had Necker Valley and Quacamero Drago, so my opponent wasn't getting any graveyard effects off, and he couldn't special summon, so he literally just scooped. Like, this card can literally just win you games against um, Ishizu tier because they can't special summon anything, and they just going to set pass, and he's 1900 B-Stick, so really good card. You guys should try it out. It's an um, underrated card, and it's less than a dollar. And of course, the three shifter because it's shifter. Like I told you guys in my previous videos and live streams, if you're going to play a rogue deck this format, play one that can play shifter because this is the best hand trap of the format. Um, two crystal bond. I used to run three. I cut it down to two to fit the car, to, to fit my text in the deck. You got, I got more spell and trap text you guys will see in a second. So I cut this down in the deck. It's a really good card. Um, very, you pit one, you add a crystal beast monster from your deck to your hand and pit one in the back row. So this is really good because you can crystal bond, pit the. Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon in the back row, 
and add a uh, pack of sister here in. Then you can use Rainbow Dragon effect to special summon one from the deck without wasting your normal summon. And that way you can um, bait out hand traps. Um, you can do a lot. So from that aspect that you don't got to wait, you can pretty much, this literally gives you a free summon, your Rainbow Dragon, and a free Pegasus. So I kind of want to pit it back at three because this plus Crystal, I'm sorry, Rainbow Dragon is full combo, but I feel like a lot of the times three was kind of bricky and I did experience the bricks at local. So two has been good. I haven't really wanted the third one since then, mainly because you got three Rainbow Bridge, which searches Crystal Bond and every other card in the deck that's not named Rainbow. So this card's the same. It's, it's the road for the deck. You got three, no exceptions. Three Rainbow Bridge of the Heart, best card in the deck. It's the reason why the deck works. If this card ever gets limited, this deck would die. Hands down. Best card in the deck. Decks, this card's amazing. It has three effects for you guys that are new to the deck. During the main phase, you can normal summon one Crystal Beast monster in addition to your normal summoner set. So that's also a good thing too because like it was a game during my during that game I did have Quacomero Drago. I played Quacomero Drago, played this additional normal summon my um, Crystal Beast monster. I destroyed my Pegasus. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't Pegasus. It was Topaz Tiger. I normal summon Pe I normal summon Quacomero Drago. And then additional normal summon my Pe my Topaz Tiger. Activated effect, destroy this, because his third his second effect is you can destroy Crystal Beast Monster you control to add a spell of trap. So I added Crystal Miracle. But essentially, you get an extra you get an extra normal summon. You can destroy a Crystal Beast Monster you control or a card you control, Crystal Beast card you control to add a Crystal Beast spell of trap from your deck to your hand. And then when a Crystal Beast Monster is sent from the front row to the back row, um, you can bounce this to your hand and bounce a card on your opponent's board back to their hand. Like, this card is insane. Um yeah. I wish Heroes had some good support like this. Now for the main deck tech. Shout outs to Nashi. I did watch his um, Crystal Beast um, update video. And he was talking about Silent Graveyard. Card's insane. I tested it at locals. It was doing me good. It says the Scarborn card affects the activate in the graveyard this turn are negated. So against tier limits, if you go first, they can play on your turn. So this is effectively a, a, a third, I'm sorry, a fourth call by the grave for you because like call by the grave, you can stop one fusion, whatever. This is actually better than call by the grave. You discard one card and they shut off gray artifacts for the turn. They can't fusion. They can't do any issues or stuff. And this actually won me games. It actually helped me um, win some games at regionals as well. Just shutting off the um, Ishizu card and shutting off the fusion is really good. Card is very underrated because it's really good. Like I talked about this card in my um, YouTube short, and this is definitely a good tech card for the meta. And if you go in first, and let's say they don't pop off, you can set it. So when they try to do something, they need to try to out your field. Shut the, you pretty much shut them off for a turn, and that's really what pretty much the goal what you want to do. So every time I drew this card, I felt very comfortable. Unless I was playing against a rogue that like flu. Well, it, flu ain't really rogue, but it does nothing against Flunder. That's the only bad part about it. But other than that, play against Ishizu, you're good to go. Crystal Beacon for the combos. Two Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates. I know some players like to run three. I, don't, I think the Jesse Cotton build run three. And the build he was messing around with. I like two. Because like a lot of the times you can still brick with this card. And you if you don't open up your Rainbow Dragon with combos, you're you're in a bad position. Plus, this card is searchable via Rainbow Bridge. So because it's a crystal card, because it has crystal in the name. This card's insane. So when you have an ultimate crystal monster, essentially when you have a Rainbow Dragon in your hand. You can either take a Rainbow Bridge card from your deck and add it to your hand, or send it to the graveyard. So you can send a Trap card, which adds your Necker Valley and your um, other Crystal Beast monster, which is going to be Pegasus 90% of the time. Or the second effect, special summon a Crystal Beast monster card from your hand, deck, or graveyard, or special Trap card zone. So this card is nutty. I wish it wasn't once per turn, but it is for obviously good reasons. And yeah, card's insane. I like it at two. I don't like it at three. I haven't tested it at three to be fair, but it just seems like a card that's good as a two of because it's, it's a big combo piece. Two Fool's Burial Goods to drop to dump the Crystal Beast Trap in order to um, add the field spells. One Necker Valley, one Zombie World. Now, this was originally going to be two Necker Valleys. I did pick up the second Necker Valley just because you guys can see it's foil. I'm not a rarity whore, but this actually looks pretty. I ain't going to lie. It's OG Necker Valley because it's a magic card. And you guys already know what it does. No, no, there's no point in explaining Necker Valley. But for you guys that do not know, because I know you guys are saying, oh, everybody doesn't know, you guys that may be due to the game, this helps you against the metagame right now because it shuts off the number one deck, which is the Shizu Tears. With this on the field, they can't move cards from the graveyard, effectively allowing you to stop them from fusion and summoning. And their only out is to make an XYZ monster attack 
one of your guys and go to go into AA Zeus. And if you don't have a way to stop an AA Zeus, you're probably going to lose because if you get Zeus in Crystal Beast and you lose all your materials, unless you're close to making the Rainbow Dragon um, fusion, you're going to lose. Zombie World, I was going to, like I said, I was going to make this a, um, another Necro Valley, but I was told this is good against Flunderies. Unfortunately, when I did play against Flunderies, it didn't come up. And even if I did, even if it did come up, my opponent was teching the freaking um, Dogmatica engine, so he would have outed it anyway. But it's a good card against people who play standard flu. I wouldn't change it for the world, honestly. This card's good. And it also kind of hurts, um, it, it kind of hurts the Ishizu tournament match as well. Like, it doesn't stop them, but it slows them down from using some of their fusions because some of their fusions require aqua monsters and it changes them to zombies, so they can't really um, do it like that. Then one Crystal Conclave. Just for a little conclave control. I like to run it because it's spot removal. And I, I like playing decks that when you go first, if you open up certain cards, you win. Plus it's searchable with Rainbow Bridge, so why not? The Rainbow Bridge of Salvation. This is the card that you dump to the graveyard to banish to add the field spell and the Crystal Beast Monster. Because it says, while it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to add a field spell and the Crystal Beast Monster in your deck to your hand. It has another effect as well. Um, if there are two or more different monster types among level 10 and higher monsters on the field. You can shuffle all cards on the field, for, except this one from both players' hands on the field the, and grab it into the deck, then each player draws five. So this, if it ever comes up where your opponent has a, if your opponent ever has a t level 10 monster on the board and you can bring out your Rainbow Dragon, you can literally just restart the game. Like this card's pretty cool, honestly. That, that, that part never comes up, but it, I guarantee you it might come up randomly one day at one of you guys' locals. And I cut Crystal Miracle down. I used to run this at three. You guys already know my old build. Two is good. Um, I rarely use three, but two is good. And yeah, so that's just the main deck. 40 card main deck. Get to the extra deck. So the extra deck is pretty solid. I'm going to get to the side deck as well. One um, Ultimate Rainbow Dragon. This card is insane. When you have the, pretty much when you bring this dude out, you can bring him out because he just requires, when you special summon this dude, because he says it must be special summon from the extra deck during the duel, you special summon an ultimate crystal monster. So, essentially, when you bring him out or regular Rainbow Dragon, you can banish seven Crystal Beast monsters and an ultimate crystal to bring him out. And essentially, he has two effects. When you got seven or more named Crystal Beast monsters that's um, banished, that's different names, he gains 7,000 attack power. So, usually when he hits the field, you win. But let's say, for example, you can't attack for whatever reason because it's main phase two. You can tribute him, he tributes for cost. Shuffle all cards on the field into the deck and especially summon as many banished Crystal Beast monsters to the field. So it's really good. He he just comes to the field as an extra body. You really just bring him out just because he's just there. Like a lot of the times you just bring both of them out and just go burn. But like for the most part, these cards are insane. Like love them both. This is why I play the deck, honestly. Dan Super Poly Targets, Starving Venom, Predator Plant, Mud Dragon. Um, Mud Dragon never came up. I don't even know how I run this card. But I just took you guys' advice because I figured if it was a scenario where I could use Mud Dragon, I can always overlay because he's a level four. Then Predator Plant, Star Venom. This actually won me a game at regionals to Star Venom because two darks, but like, yeah, it's pretty nutty. Then for the combos, Appaloosa, Kirabini, Cross Sheep. Appaloosa is good because you spam a lot of monsters in the field. Kirabini is for the combos. If you ever brick, like you open up a, a level, or if you ever open up one of your um, level three Crystal Beast monsters, you want to try to make him as soon as possible to mid combo to dump your third one so that way you can make your Rainbow Dragon plays. And Cross Sheep, he's, in, he's integral to the combo because when you bring out the first fusion, you can special summon your Ruby Carmichael back from the graveyard, special summon all the ones back from the back, the back zone to the front zone, and start comboing more. IP just is just have interruption on your opponent's turn because you can make Unicorn. I like Unicorn because sometimes you can pitch dead cards out of your hand, like the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, to pop off and get spot removal. Then Abyss Dweller, because he's good this format. Maguska, because he's good this format. You guys don't know Abyss Dweller, when you activate this effect, card effects can be used in the graveyard for the turn. And then Maguska, he's literally just a skill drain on the field. Monsters have to go to defense mode while he's on the field in defense mode, and their effects are and their activated effects are negated. They can still use their continuous effects, but their activated effects are negated. Then Dugaris, um, card's insane. You spend some one back, you can draw two. Do a lot of good things with him. You guys already know what he does. Lightning Chidora, because he's spot removal. Playing as a back row deck, you can just bring him out, force them to use their back row, and then use the second effect to top deck one of their other cards. Cowboy for game. You guys already know winning time. Time rules are a thing, guys, so that's the reason why we run Cowboy. And then the extra deck. I'm, I'm sorry, side deck that I ran. Another Necker Valley. So if I play against the Shizu tier, I'll take out the um, Zombie World for this. 
Harvey's Feather Duster never came up, never needed it personally, but at the same time, it's still good against certain rogue matchups like Flunderies and etc. I decided against Flute, just didn't see it. A third, Quacomero Drago. So if I'm going first against the Ishizu Tier, I can open this up and just pop off with it. Three triple tags. I consider main decking this, but I think it's good for the side deck. Because a lot of times you might, it's a lot of rogue decks floating around this format, and I just don't want this being a dead card. So it's good against the Shizu Tier, um, against Flu. That's pretty much what you do. Or against people who use an offside, a lot of um, hand traps. Three super powers. This is mainly for branded Despia and um, obviously in Shizu Tier. Three evenly matched. I typically sided this in against a Shizu Tier, going second. Force them to use their if because a lot of times they don't a lot of players it, it depends on the Shizu tier player some of them don't run the counter trap some of them do some of them uh, some of them rather run the effect negation trap so they would rather run the effect negation trap so even match comes up a lot because they don't really have omni negate they have a lot of interruption so this card's good um against flu as well is good now obviously ghost ghost mourner and mula kill to win in time and it actually helped me win in time because i top decked it my opponent uses effect i'm like ghost mourner and when I had that Super Poly in I'm like, yeah, it's over. He's going to be mad. So, this was my Christmas deck in detail, man. Post your guys' thoughts and opinions about this video in the comment section down below. Uh, I'm going to be doing a test hand video dropping tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. Also, if you guys love the video, feel free to subscribe for more. All right, it's your boy Rogue Hero, and I'm signing out. Peace. See you guys in the next video.